for Diwali, there are certain crackers like flower pots, rockets, and those uh, sparkling incense, which children enjoy a lot. And I was just seeing that the rocket, it just goes up high in the air, and it looks very beautiful when it is up in the air, but ultimately it comes down, right? The sparkling incense, it looks very beautiful and bright, and it's so nice giving light, but at the end, it becomes black and turns into ash. And I was just thinking that the life of the material uh, people in this world is something like those Diwali crackers. They look so beautiful while they are alive, on the top of their carriers, doing great things, but at the end, they all fall down. But the life of the devotee is glorious in this world and also after this world. That is the beauty. We see the contrast uh, of the of the end of the end of the movie in a devotee's life and a metallistic person's life. You see, most of the metallistic people they may be very successful, whether it is the uh, Napoleon Bonaparte or you know the, the Alexander the Great. I mean, or, or just about anybody you take it from the social life, political life, or you know, just about any anybody you just take out on random in history. And you will see that they had a glorious life, but their end was very sad. They were crying, they didn't want to die, they were, they were suffering. That is how they left their body. And on a contrast, we see that when our devotees leave their life, their bodies, they're so happy. For Gaur Govinda Maharaj in Mayapur Dham, he left his body with his Gopalji's photo in his, uh, you know, towards his, close to his heart and talking about the separation of Radha and Krishna. It's like that I can go on and on and on and we see that they had such beautiful passing away where maybe they may have some kind of a material suffering but they were so happy and they were so um, looking forward uh, to go back to Krishna. So they knew they know where is the next destination. They're not confused and they're not baffled. But people in this material world, uh, they're confused. They don't want to leave this body, right? So they, at the, at the end moment, they are suffering. So we as devotees, we also want to have a glorious ending to our life, right? In Srimad Bhagavatam, it says, the perfection of human life is if we can have a great departure in, in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 1, Sloka number 6, it says, Ante Narayana Smriti. If at the end you are able to remember Narayan, then your life is successful. Because death we are going to have, whether we like it or not like it, death is certain. Now Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita 2.27, Jata Sehi Druva Mrityu. Somebody is born in this world, he has to die somebody dies he has to born again so death is certain but how we are going to go through the death that is in our hand that is something we can work on right dying man should uh, do shravanam kirtanam and smaranam now somebody may say well that is about dying man but i'm healthy fit and fine no we are all in the process we are all in the queue parikshit maharaj knew that he's going to die in seven days and we don't know whether we are for another seven hours or not. We are not sure. That's the only difference. So when we do nice shravanam, uh, hear about the Lord, and then we repeat it, do kirtanam, then Lord can stay in our smaranam, in our remembrance. And if the Lord is in our remembrance, then we don't become a remember in this world. If we remove the Lord from our remembrance, then we keep on having a remembership of this material world, the club of this material world, we have to go on renewing our remembership. But if we remember Lord, then we can go back, back to Godhead. See, um, for a karmi or for a metallistic person, a death is like a axe. They're afraid, you know, oh my God, death is like an axe going to kill them, you know. But for a yogi, death is a tool to take them to Krishna. Sometimes we take a car and we go to the airport and when we reach the airport, we are ready to give up the car because now we have to board the flight. We don't cry that I don't want to give up car. You know, you have to give up the car, then only you can, you know, board the 
flight and go to your next destination. So for the yogis, this body or the death is just a tool. For a, for a materialistic person, the death is an axe which is going to kill them. They are afraid of it. But for a devotee, death is an invitation of love. It's an invitation of love by Lord Shri Krishna. And it's an invitation to come back home, back to Godhead, to Lord Shri Krishna. So death can become a, a lover's invitation for us if we develop that loving relationship with Krishna. Just like a young girl, <coughs> when she's getting married, uh, she's crying because she's going to leave her parents. At the same time, there's a lot of happiness in her heart because she knows that she's going to the person's house whom she knows very well, who loves her, and she's going to be happy there. So similarly for devotees, when they leave this body, yeah, it's a little painful because they're going to leave the uh, physical association of those devotees out here in this world, but they're happy because they know the destination. They're going to a place where there is somebody who loves them all the more uh, than anybody in this world and who is there ever well wisher. So for a devotee, uh, death is a uh, lover's invitation. So we all uh, need to work hard in this direction, develop a loving relationship with Krishna, develop a loving relationship with devotees, be grateful, be forgiving, be serious, be conscious, fix up our goal and work in this direction. Uh, <clears throat> then we can also have a, a glorious death like Srila uh, Prabhupada and we can go dancing back home, back to Godhead. Thank you so much. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna.